Hey book buddies, I'm Eric from Lonesome Reader. This is the biggest book haul that I've ever done. I have 27 books that I want to talk to you about and I thought before I started making this, like should I cut them down and uh, just talk about less? But no, I'm, I'm really excited about reading all of them so I, I want to talk about them all. I'll try to keep it brief. Uh, I wonder if I can like lift them all at once. <laughs> Okay, that is the only bit of exercise that I want to do for the month of May. Uh, no more lifting heavy things. Okay, so first off, I went out and bought myself a copy of Circe by Madeline Miller with this beautiful gleaming cover. I read The Son of Achilles a few years ago when it came out and I loved it, uh, so I was really excited about this and also I saw really great reviews for it on Jean Menzies and Catherine of the Readers Athenaeum's uh, channels, uh, their booktube channels, they made good reviews of it. So this is a reimagining of the story of the Greek goddess Circe uh, who uh, was sort of outcast from the gods and when uh, she started to mingle with mortals and the dramatic story that follows from that. Uh, it's very excited to get to this. Next I went out and got a copy of To Be a Machine by Mark O'Connell. This just won the Welcome Book Prize and it's the story of, it's a non-fiction book about a transhumanism of people who try to use machines and technology to evolve the human condition. Um, and I've heard that it's a very funny book too, so uh, I don't often read nonfiction like this, but it sounds really unique. So the rest of the books that I have to talk about were all first published in May uh, within the UK. Uh, so I went out and bought a copy of Boys Keep Swinging by Jake Shears. This is his memoir. Uh, Jake Shears is the front man for the group uh, Scissor Sisters, as I'm sure you know. And uh, there was this big reading and signing at Gaze the Word Bookshop. So I went up and queued to get my copy and here is another uh, awkward encounters with authors story. I don't mean to keep having these awkward encounters uh, with authors but you know it just it just seems to inevitably keep happening. And I know you all like these stories from when I made a video about it before. Uh, so I queued up to get my copy and actually I bought this copy for uh, my friend Tristan uh, who's a big fan of the Scissor Sisters because I thought he would really enjoy it and so when I queued up um, to get my copy signed uh, because there were so many people here you know they did that thing where they handed me a tab of paper before I got to him um, to write down the name that I wanted it inscribed to and it was funny when I went up to meet him and have him sign it the, his sort of minder who was standing by him automatically asked me, can I have your camera? Because it was just assumed that I would want a selfie with him. Um, this is the only like signing event I've ever been to where it's just assumed that you want a selfie with the author. So I got my picture taken with him, uh, but then I was wearing a t-shirt that was, that had a Twin Peaks quote on it. And uh, he got really excited when he saw that t-shirt because he said he is halfway through watching the new series of Twin Peaks and I'm a big Twin Peaks fan. And so he, he signed the, the memoir out to my friend Tristan, um, but he also wrote on it Twin Peaks Forever, uh, which um, I didn't really want him to put on there because it's for my friend Tristan um, who doesn't watch Twin Peaks and doesn't really care about Twin Peaks. But then when I saw him do that and he was like, he was like look, I put a Twin Peaks tribute and I was like, I was like oh, great. <laughs> and so I think he, he was a bit scared that he'd um, done something wrong, uh, but then like, uh, what could I say? So I just thanked him and slunk off with my copy. Um, but I, I am, I am hoping to read this before I give it to my friend Tristan. I don't know. Do you, do you ever do that when you like buy a book to gift to somebody, but then read it first? Um, that that that's a that's a bit sneaky, isn't it? But I'm very respectful of my books. I I don't I try not to break the spine and stuff. Anyway, the next books I have to talk about, I'm really excited about uh, because. These were all printed as part of Virago Press's um, 40th celebration. Virago Press is 40 years old. If you don't know Virago Press, they, they republish a lot of um, great books by women authors um, who, who have sort of gone out of print. And like, honestly, I don't know where we would be today in the world of literature without Virago Press having brought all these great authors back um, and also publishing new fiction. So they've done some reprints of some of their most classic authors in these new editions, beautiful, gleaming new editions. Uh, so there's a book of short stories by Grace Paley. There is a book by Angela Carter. Just like, look at this beautiful, gleaming cover. And uh, 
book, uh, Zora, Zora Neale Hurston, um, Their Eyes for Watching God, uh, which I read this many years ago when I was in college, and uh, Muriel Spark novel, Memento Mori. And something which is so wonderful and fun about Virago editions is that quite often they have modern writers write introductions to these books. And so they've published this, this special book called Writers as Readers, um, a sort of celebration of Virago classic, modern classic authors. And so you have all these great authors um, like Margaret Jabal writing on Jane Austen and Sarah Waters writing on Sylvia Townsend Warner and uh, Zadie Smith writing on Zora Neale Hurston. And so this is a collection of all of um, their introductions of these authors writing about paying tribute to these authors from the past. And I just love this sort of continuation when you can see how uh, some of our greatest modern writers were really influenced from writers of the past. Um, so these are just such beautiful books and, uh, and there's, there's a whole series of them that they've just put out. Uh, so I think it's so wonderful. And next is a book which is sort of on the same topic of um, female authors. It's a nonfiction book called Sharp uh, by Michelle Dean. And this is the, it's a sort of like joint biography of a whole group of authors like Mary McCarthy and Joan Didion and Susan Sontag, Hannah Arendt and Dorothy Parker. And it shows the sort of intersections of their lives at, at various points over the decades that they were writing. And also, but also it's sort of like a social history of the literary landscape at that time. That sounds so fascinating and so good. Next is a debut novel called Problems by Jade Sharma. This is published by Tramp Press, which is an independent press in Ireland that I love. And uh, it's been published in America too. And I think it's made quite a splash there. So it's a, it's a novel about a sort of uh, modern young woman's life where a lot of things are going wrong in her life that her her husband um, drinks a lot and uh, it feels like their marriage is breaking up and she has a lover and her uh, her studies are going wrong and and uh, and so it's a it's a novel about sort of modern life um, but also struggling with addiction and despondency but i believe it's written in a sort of semi-comic way as well so i'm so excited to read this debut novel a book of short stories from norway um, from one of norway's uh, leading writers and dramatists john fosse is called scenes from a childhood and i think some of the stories are sort of semi-autobiographical and then other of the stories um, get slightly surreal uh, so and i i really like it when short stories have short story collections have like a mixture of styles like that. Uh, so this is published by Fitzcarraldo Editions and you know their trademark beautiful blue style which like matches very nicely with my blue sofa. I was just reading another Fitzcarraldo book recently and just like it feels so aesthetically satisfying just like sitting on my blue sofa reading my blue Fitzcarraldo book. Ironopolis by Glenn James Brown. This is his debut novel. It's about a council estate um, in England and the lives of various people who live there and, and so I think it like depicts a, a side of English life that we don't often see depicted in literature uh, so very eager to read this debut novel. Whistle in the Dark by Emma Healy. This is her follow-up novel to her novel Elizabeth is Missing uh, which is a novel I read several years ago and really loved and so uh, this is the story of a young mother whose daughter goes missing for four days and then uh, is found. Uh, but when she comes back to her, um, she's much changed, uh, but the daughter won't talk about what happened to her when she was missing. And so it's sort of unraveling the mystery of what happened to her and how she's changed. And I had a fun experience where um, Penguin really invited me to come to this evening uh, to do some paintings where um, Emma Healy um, led this painting group of people to um, make reproductions of this painting that semi-inspired this novel. And so, um, so, so yeah, so I made this, this painting, um, but I think I really don't have much artistic talent at all. Um, it didn't come out that well, but it was supposed to be a bit abstract, so um, I think I got away with it. America is Not the Heart by Elaine Castillo. I talked about this novel at the very beginning of the year um, as like one of my most anticipated novels of the year. Um, it's the story of a, a girl who, um, whose family comes from the Philippines and moves to America, and about the, it feels like she, she's led many different 
lives, lived married many different lives in these different locations and with different people. So it's about how one person can t contain many different aspects to their identity living in all these different places. Um, so very eager to read this finally. The Pisces by Melissa Broder. This is about a young woman who's studying to get her PhD and she takes a merman for a lover and I think it's really interesting how sort of stories of women having affairs with mermen is sort of in vogue now with uh, the, the film The Shape of Water. And uh, also there was uh, reprinted recently was this great novel called Mrs. Caliban by Rachel Engels. Um, have any of you read that? Uh, it's such a beautiful novel. Uh, but yeah, it seems like stories of, of women having uh, affairs with men who are slightly of another species um, is, is just sort of popular at the moment. And uh, Melissa Broder is the, the author of the Twitter account So Sad Today, which is a very funny Twitter account, but it's, it's like, I always think it's really strange when they list on a biography of a writer how many Twitter followers that they have. She has like over half a million Twitter followers. The Insomnia Museum by Laura Canciani. This is her debut novel. Um, it's about a father who's a hoarder and he stays at home and he, he sort of collects all these odd bits of pieces um, that he keeps in his house and his young daughter he sort of sequesters within his house too and doesn't really let her out and so it's about her process of finally going out into the world and trying to understand the story of why her father became a shut-in in this way. And I think it's interesting because the, the author herself was agoraphobic and just lived inside. So I think she'll give a very intense, uh, realistic portrait of what it's like to be shut-in for so long. The Baghdad Clock by Sahad al-Rawi. This is a novel about uh, two girls living in Baghdad in 1991 when the Gulf War was sort of raging through the country and how the city was transformed, but how for the girls um, life is just sort of continuing on, but obviously much transformed by the larger events that are happening around them. And I had talked recently in a wrap-up video about how I'd love to see a novel about the Middle East that sort of isn't about like headline topics. And so I'm uh, really eager to read this novel that gives a different side of life in Iraq. Disoriental by Nagar Javadi. Uh, this is a proof copy. So this is what the finished copy will look like. And this is the story of a young woman who, um, whose family comes from Iran. And when she was a young girl, um, they moved to France. And so now as a young woman, she's sort of in the process of trying to think about her past and her heritage and where she came from and um, while also living her modern life. And from what I understand, it's written in a very innovative way where the sort of past comes intruding upon her life. And uh, so, yeah, it sounds like a really creative, interesting book that gives a different side to Middle Eastern life and Middle Eastern history. And then there is another novel about sort of Middle Eastern migration, Call Me Zebra, by Azareen van der Vallee Alumi, which is the most amazing name. Um, and yeah, this is a, a story about a sort of multi-generational story about a, a young woman whose uh, family came from Iran and um, she grows up in America. And it's another story about her sort of process of um, discovering more about her heritage by she moves to Europe and travels through Europe and it's about her experiences in the modern day but also thinking back on her history. Um, so this was um, published in America first and I've heard a lot of good things about it from America so uh, very good to read this novel. The Neighborhood by Mario Vargas Llosa, uh, the Nobel Prize winning Mario Vargas Llosa and uh, this is a story about uh, two different couples in the 90s in uh, Lima in Peru and how uh, they, they're sort of very privileged couples and about their intermingling affairs, um, both sexual and sort of political. And so it has that sort of political intrigue edge um, while also having this romantic drama. Meet Me at the Museum uh, by Anna Janssen. This is uh, another proof copy, so this is what the finished copy will look like. And this sounds like a very sweet story about a older woman who starts corresponding with this older man um, who works at a museum, a historical museum, and they have a shared interest in local history. And it's about their, their burgeoning friendship, in, which might become a romance, I'm not really sure. Acts of Infidelity by Lena Anderson. This is translated from the Swedish 
and she spells Anderson with two S's. I sort of wonder if sometime in my family's history, uh, they, they spelt Anderson with two S's, but then when they moved to America, they just lost one of the S's. Uh, but anyway, this is the story of a woman who uh, starts up an affair with an actor, and uh, the, the actor is married, and she knows this, and the, the actor admits that, and, uh, but they have an affair anyway, and, um, and she, she realizes over time that she sort of complicitly becomes the mistress to this man, and so it's about the, the complicated relationship of that dynamic. Milkman by Anna Burns. Uh, this is an author from uh, Northern Ireland, and it's the story of a middle sister in this family who just wants to like sort of pass and not really be noticed, but then she has this affair and strikes up this relationship which her family becomes aware of, and uh, suddenly she, she feels very conspicuous. So it sort of sounds like a, a novel that gives a different perspective on family life. Missing by Alison Moore. This is a novel about a woman who becomes increasingly isolated when her husband leaves her and she moves out to a very remote area and she thinks a ghost inhabits um, one of her neighboring rooms. And the author Alison Moore, I read her novel uh, The Lighthouse um, several years ago and her writing is so beautiful. Um, so I'm really eager to uh, read another book by her. A Shout in the Ruins by Kevin Powers. Uh, this is another proof copy, so this is what the finished copy will look like. And uh, this is a novel sort of about history and the impact of history. It's a, about this like dilapidated plantation in the American South and uh, talking about the, the history, a 400 year old history of uh, people who have passed through that place. And I've heard from some people that Kevin Powers' writing is quite pretentious, um, so I'm a little like uncertain, but like I'm, I'm eager to find out for myself what I think his book is like. Chemistry by Wiki Wen. This is a novel that was first published last year and it's only just now coming out in paperback and I remember hearing a lot about how good this novel was, um, so I, I was eager to pick it up, so I'm glad to finally have it in paperback. And it's about a young woman who's um, in university studying chemistry and uh, how she becomes slightly disillusioned with that and isn't sure if that's the path she wants to take, but then uh, she has Chinese parents um, who put a lot of pressure on her um, that, that she should be responsible and finish her degree. And so it's about that stage of uncertainty of not knowing what you want to do with your life. And finally is a non-fiction book uh, called How to Survive the End of the World by Adam Gillies. And this is a book about how, uh, you know, we're sort of bombarded by lots of really depressing news stories and it sort of feels sometimes like the world is really coming to the end and so I think he tries to offer these strategies of, of how to navigate that and survive through that still with a positive attitude. So there they are. Those are all the new books that I got recently and that I'm really excited to read. Uh, but which of these books like strike your fancy and um, what do you think sounds interesting and have you read any of them? Do you have any suggestions of what I should start with first? I hope you have a lovely day and I'll speak to you again soon.